All right, so recordings. So uh, on the torch table right now, we've got definitely some issues regarding stiffness of the motion. So it's uh, there is some good stiffness. So we've got <clears throat> two axes on the X, two axes on the Y. Um, so the thing is that uh, in principle, if you've got brass bushings like we do have, they have a coefficient of friction of about 0.1 or so. In other words, if you've got like 10 pound load, friction you're going to get out of that is is about one pound. <coughs> In our system, the Y axes are carrying about 80 pounds. If you count up the weight of the rods, I actually show some of the, these numbers here. If you look at uh, just weight of shaft, weight of the whole system, I'm getting about 80 pounds total that the the Y axes are carrying. Uh, so each bushing by itself slides smoothly, naturally, as it should. It's all impregnated, coefficient of friction of about 0.1. But what we're getting into is definite stiffness, and we can trace that back to some very particular things. So we definitely don't have, um, if the entire weight is 80, say the weight on the one side is 40, because you've got two sides, two two Y sides, say it's like about 40 or so per side. If you take 10% of that, we should be getting about four pounds if things were aligned. And that's certainly not the case. Like we have to like, man, it's hard to even with your body to move the thing. Now the we pressure, do have... You pressure on the bearings, the bearings on the Y axis is based on the amount of weight that they're suspending, like 10% of the weight they are... Pretty much so. The idea of friction is that Friction is like coefficient of friction of one means that say this is a this mouse is a coefficient of friction of one, that means the amount of force it would take to move it would be equivalent to its weight. If it's point one, it means that you can push it only with like one tenth the its weight. So you can use that basic kind of this basic principle of thinking here. You've got smooth rods, you've got steel rods that are factory made. They're actually cold rolled steel which is a little bit smoother than standard steel like standard steel is called it's called hot rolled typically but we've got smooth rods we've got bushings that are designed specifically for low friction they're oil impregnated uh, bushings that are one inch and then you google what's the coefficient of friction of bronze on steel and you'll get values between like 0.08 to up to as much as Point three, point three being like the worst case where it's not lubricated, um, but between point eight and point three. So if you have lubrication like these, these bushings do have some lubrication in them, and then we can also oil it up with a little diesel or other lubricants. But we're expecting, like if we look at what's going on, we're expecting good motion. Like the other side of the Y, that's. It's getting us decent motion. Now we do have a lot of a lot of force in the motors themselves. What do they have? They we were looking at those numbers and they've got up to 68 pounds per motor. And therefore we were actually getting more than a belt could hold. Because if you look at some of the numbers for the GT2 belts that we were using before, their tooth skipping force is what you look at, and that gets to be uh, I was looking at some of those numbers and it was like it was definitely lower than 68. It was like maybe up to 30. Actually, I have some of those numbers here. Let's take a look at the chart here. Um, <clears throat> look at this thing. Um, well, let's see where. That that that's it right there. How much, when are you going to start jumping teeth? So, because we start with two millimeter pitch, meaning two millimeter spacing GT2 belts, now we're actually going to HTD. The, the style of belt that we're talking about right now is actually HTD. It's a little bit of a different, slightly different profile of the, the way the belt looks. It's three millimeter pitch, so instead of two millimeter spacing between the teeth, it's three. HTD is high high torque drive that's what it stands for now GT is actually deemed to be a little better but I could not find any place that had GT 
three belt like I just couldn't find it like online the place that sells this which is gates belts like they had like 12 week lead time and stuff I don't know why I couldn't find it but I could find some HDD which is pretty good it's actually stronger um, stronger it's not as accurate but here we're talking about accuracy requirements for ourselves are like 400 microns or like a little under a millimeter that's that's fine for what the HDD can do but anyway if you look at these numbers here tooth jump torque for two millimeter GT2 now they, they show five millimeter belt we we had six but look at those very low numbers the two millimeter GT GT2 that is 4.8 millimeter on the left hand side we've got six but look at that it's only like eight pounds before you start jumping teeth on a 20 groove pulley so the size of the pulley will determine that if it's a bigger pulley you've got more teeth catching so you'll have a different number we happen to have a 20 groove pulley those half inch little pulleys that we have and we're using the six millimeter belt so you're expecting to actually start jumping at eight pounds how much force do we have in those motors 68 so you can see that that's a, a well undersized belt for what we're doing so then you jump into the HTD, which is what we have right now, and it's a factor of four. So you're jumping from like eight inch pounds, eight pounds of, well, okay. You have to interpret these numbers here because for a 20 millimeter pulley, this is not as bad as it looks. It's not really eight pounds because for a 20 millimeter pulley, diameter is half inch. So that means the actual radius of drive is a quarter inch which means you take this eight inch pounds eight pounds is what you have at an inch but at quarter inches you've got 32 pounds in other words if the motor is like 68 inch pounds we're tapping about half of its power half of its power before you start skipping teeth because it's the torque is the idea that um, inch pounds means that you've got so much force at an inch but if you go inside, like if it's a ro rotating pulley, like the closer you go to the shaft, the more force you have, the harder it is to stop it. Like if you have a big lever on a pulley like that, it's very easy to stop it. Like if it's 10 inches out and you're trying to hold that pulley, it'll be like one tenth of the four pounds. You only need like point, point 0.4 pounds to hold that pulley at a far radius, but very close in you get high force. So in our case, because the pulleys are so tiny, like quarter inch radius, you get about 32 pounds according to this table here for two millimeter GT2 belt which is still half of what the motors can put out and the numbers for the motor the inch pounds of the motors we have are they're like 68 pounds well 68 pounds at that quarter inch it's not 68 inch pounds it's 68 pounds at the quarter inch mark um, okay, but just leave it at that motors, just wondering uh, before we had even weaker motors right when they, they were not sufficient or was what was the reason for jumping from the small small motors to the small motors Oh, uh, which ones? So there's the NEMA 17 and 23. Right now we're using the 23. Mm -hmm. Which ones are you talking about? Uh, they're a bit shorter, basically, maybe. About the motor? Or yeah, the motor. I mean, that was a year, few years back, I presume. They're lying in the shop or oh. the data builds. The yeah, I them. don't even know. That might have been for another project that's, I think, out of the scope. Okay, but the reason wasn't that they were too weak, so you... No, you it was just probably some other project. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not related to yeah. Yeah, not really related. So we're getting about half of what we can pull with our motors through GT2 belts. So I got these three millimeter pitch HTD belts. Now the numbers there are much more attractive. So you've got like 30 to 40, like 40 inch, 30 to 40 inch pounds at that point. And therefore at the quarter inch, you can actually drive like 120 pounds or so or more in other words these belts should be fine they should not be skipping with our motors and I don't think they are and we have observed that already what happened was when the axis was stuck I was looking at the pulley and the belt was not skipping it was actually the motor was skipping because it couldn't have it didn't have enough force so it tried to go and then it kind of like snapped back so we're good we're cool on that so belt is not the issue here so friction is the issue. What do we do about it? The friction, <clears throat> so you start with like first principles of friction. 
uh, this, these coefficients of friction. So, so bushings aligned on a shaft are, that's cool. Like the very low friction, you can move them very easily with your finger. If you put down a bunch of your weight on it and still try to move it, it's still rather smooth. Uh, you have no problem moving it if you, even if you like hold it down really hard. It's a little more than like ball bearings because ball bearings would roll even smoother. They're coefficient. I mean, what's the coefficient of friction of linear bearings? Um, Yeah, look at them. It's like significant advantages of rolling elements, linear guides. Is there low coefficient of friction? Like 0.01. Yeah, so it's 10x. It's 10x better. It's super low at that point. Now, we're not using ball bearings for a couple of reasons. One, at high loads, the ball bearings, unless you have chrome rods, which are more expensive, uh, you can do it with chrome rods, but the ball, ball bearings tend to eat up your rods. Like even if you have stainless or whatever you use, I've seen that on other printers where we're using the rods and, and the, the rods would just get eaten up by the balls. And so the two disadvantages were the noise and the, that your rods get destroyed. They are lower friction, um, but only if you've got them aligned well. If you have a lot of tension in it, the balls actually like drive into the rods that we have. So we went away from them. The plastic is really good for multiple reasons. One, we can print them. Two, they're very quiet and they're adequate. They're good enough. So. But they do have, like for this brass, it's higher, it's higher than ball bearings. So one solution would be ball bearings, but still that doesn't solve your issues if, you're, if your axes are not, if the prints are crappy. But let's look at what a crappy print means. Crappy print means uh, you're going to get discrepancies, say you're printing with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I mean, the best accuracy you can get is maybe like 10% of that. So if it's like 40, 400 microns, which is 0.4 millimeter, it's like 40 microns that's that's not super super precision like even a little burp in your print can do like what I show here so you got you got this you got a little burp of print that could be less than a millimeter and for us since we're printing with 1.2 millimeter nozzles you get that all over the place and we've got alignment like skewed prints and stuff like that so it's very easy for this condition to happen uh, a little burp of irregularity, your bushings are not aligned, and you get for a lot of force. So the only way your, your bushings are sliding smoothly is if they're aligned with the, with the shafts. But any force on them, so say you can find them now in your carriage, and your carriage is not perfect print. You, talk, you have to talk about precision machining, meaning like one thousandth or like 10 micron for you to not see these kinds of effects. Because the fit around the bushing of the bushing around the rod is quite precise. How precise is it? You would look at the bushing that we use and you would say it's interior tolerance and that determines the amount of inaccuracy in the print. Like say you've got a print imperfection that's as big as that tolerance and at that point you start jamming. So what is that tolerance? In other words, that little burp I, I drew there what is the maximum size that we can sustain without stuff getting tight? So we go to, say, the McMaster car. Uh, let's look at the specs of those all impregnated bushings. We can actually look at this <clears throat> and say, okay, McMaster car, oil embedded sleeve bearings. What we have is our one inch, but so let's look at the product one inch. And let's get a figure. So we got, I think we've got the, <coughs> these ones, one and a half. <coughs> Go to the product detail. Uh, wait, I think that looks a little different than what we have. Um, <coughs> let's look here. So uh, let's do shaft diameter one inch. Um, one inch, it's one and a quarter here, um, one and a quarter this one here. I mean, their, their load capacity, they're huge. It's like you can hold like 3,000 pounds on these things at 60 RPM. It's huge. But 
Oh, uh, let's see. So look at their imperfection. ID tolerance. OD tolerance. Man, that is very tiny. It's very precise. So what we're saying there, if it's for one inch diameter shaft, it's one thousandth space between the shaft and this bushing. So anything that's larger than one thousand will jam it. Well, that explains why we're jamming. Um, so how do we solve that? So the solution for that was you leave the, the bushing space a little larger, print that interior hole a little larger, so the, the bearing can free float a little bit, and then you don't jam. So it's always an in, a, a uh, trade-off. Go ahead. Aren't you running the risk of having a, like a lateral shape to it? You do, yeah. you do. So you have to get it tight enough, but not over tight. Like what I can tell you is the, sh the case that what we were doing in a the shop there with a the torch table, it is over tight. It's, I mean, the two carriages are bound in such, a, there's that metal plate, but whenever we, we have two imperfect holders and that plate like fixes it, you know, it's, it's what I showed here. Anytime you would fix, you're your bearing y -axis. in yeah, okay. this is a talking about the y-axis that applies to any of our axes yeah. or, or everything carriage. so in one this could be like one carriage so let's say this is the carriage this part um, are the longer forms of those uh, pipe bearings yeah, there are. If they were twice as long, it would have one single piece that never would use Yeah, yeah, but then again, that's if that's the case. Uh, but let's. Well, we don't have them right here, but we can make make provide solutions with these already. Yes, yeah, so a longer one. You can do one for instead of two. Yeah, that could be a. A good idea like how much do they cost like the question would be cost or, or actually do they have them so length the max length so we're using the one and a half a one and a half length there oh yeah they got oh they got plenty of them they got like three four uh four let's see four oh yeah 70 bucks if you want to spend that but there you go how much are the other ones five dollar Really? So why would they be so much more expensive? Because that's how the industry works when it's a non this is not a common part. So once you go to non common parts, which is actually as a side note an advantage of open source construction set construction set approaches is it doesn't matter if you make a short one or a big one, you still have the same tooling for each. But that's just how industry works. So here, okay, it's not, you know, seventy bucks. We've got sixteen of them in our axes. You you're like over a thousand bucks just for the bushings on the y-axis that's kind of crazy so no let's let's see what we can do with the existing ones that we do have um, so for one well here in this carriage yes that that can be an issue now if you have two carriages that's a bigger issue because now you're binding like we bound the two carriages together if they're not now you're forcing the bushings to be not aligned you get more jamming and that's exactly what we're seeing so what are the solutions here? So basically it's like, let's reduce the number of bearings for one. Uh, like for example, each each carriage, if we, if we still use two carriages, just put two bearings, like just redo the pr prints, put one bearing, one on top, one on bottom. We actually, in Hampus and I were reworking it, we actually were taking out bushings and we saw that it moved easier, yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's That's a natural best, thing. Uh, and, and we saw the totally wet piece, I mean, yeah, you have to you have to consider all those issues. So you have to. It's an interplay of how you're fixing things together and how you're loosening things up. Have it's a, <coughs> no, I haven't tested anything. Because yesterday we <coughs> we make it work. Okay. So How'd you make it work? Uh, well, well, one bushing to start with, I guess. We yeah, one pushing we put on, on one pushing. Like first, we put two bushings. Then we align the first one and put it yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Took all the, uh, well, put the, um, the screws again, and then take the other carriage 
Yeah. Yeah. I think well, one maybe carriage that's is still it. two bushings and the other <clears> carriage, <throat> I think you put that out as, I don't know. Yeah, is it pretty robust right now? We can move no problem. Yeah, yeah, the whole no, no. side is low. It's super it's moving. Moving. It's moving. And the X axis, you put all the belts. And it's um, when you put positive and negative, it's, it goes to the same, same direction. Same yeah, same direction. but that's a different story. That's unrelated to our discussion now. I guess that must be a vibrant problem. That's Say what? You get on the X, you get, you get opposite motion? Or? No, no, it's the same motion. No matter yeah. which direction you're going. I didn't know Wiring. So once again, yeah. did we tin all the wire ends so we could get a good connection? Let's start with that, if that still hasn't been done. Yeah, we talked right. about that. Yeah. But the wire nuts are not like super precise connectors. You definitely got to tin things. When you stick it into that hole, um, if you don't tin them, the wires, when you snap it down on the wires, they'll just break off and stuff is, like that. So, that Or you can catch the insulation. You got to be careful about the... Would that be a switched wire? That it's probably a loose connection somewhere. Probably one wire that's... All go one direction. Oh, uh, must be a wire. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> that's a different issue. Well... So wiring. Uh, I've never really had those motors go out. Like, I've never really seen any of them so mm -hmm. if a motor is not moving that's probably wiring one question about the bearings how easy is it to mess up the, the precision if you know what I mean we put it up a straight we hammered perhaps hammered it and whacked it in place and stuff is this is the, something to worry about that the bushings at this point are already you know well you can take already it impeded or you're, you're asking if, say, the bushings are already like deformed or something? Right, exactly, yeah. Well, you can take it out and see if it still slides smoothly if it's just out on the rod itself. <coughs> I think those are pretty stiff. Yeah, they're, they're really solid, those things. Yeah. Um, so, so we already ended up doing the lower number of bushings. So what about, so can we do this? How confident are we that this is pretty robust? Like, do we want to... Because the thing to do right now is, now that we're retrofitting into now, like we're working with what we have, we should probably spend the time to, okay, maybe make this dedicated one one bushing piece. Uh, but we still have to connect them together in an effective way. We did that before on the former torch table. We had, to, what we did was a metal plate and in the interior was actually two bushings, but they were single, like, they were, so there were four, four bushings all together, yep. but there were two pieces that were separate. The first torch you did, <clears throat> um, was it running on, on bear, on like skate bearings? On a <coughs> the very first torch was gear rack. With gear rack? Yeah. Have you tried <clears throat> that, just like skate bearings on like, on tubing, on like square tubing or something that you can kind of clamp on from both sides? <clears throat> No, haven't haven't done. I mean, we've done that for the Y ax, uh, the Y, the X, before. Done a little bit of it, but but here we're. I mean, yeah, of course you can do this, but that's a completely different system, yeah, completely I know. designed. Just, I'm just seeing as there are so many pinch points in it. I'm just wondering if there is maybe a redesign around all of this in the larger picture. That would just it could be if if we find this doesn't work when we follow yeah. good procedure. Yeah. I mean. Right now we're running into some difficulties, so um, maybe in the future we say, oh man, this is just too hard for for people, we migrate to something else. But in the other systems you also have its own challenges too, so in any case you have to know what you're doing. So uh, to me, just conceptually speaking, I mean I've done the, the rails and all that, yeah. done it, I actually don't think it's easier than this. I mean it looks easier, it's nice and smooth roll, but there's other issues that come into place. So. What well, so if you have a pinch of on two sides, then it's absolutely critical that that spacing be accurate or you bind up. So yeah. that's another. So you're adding yet one more you variable this, here your, your to what we already have. Adjust your screw with a spring on the back side. Yeah, springs are springs and adjusters are the way, but that's a lot of mechanical parts. Yeah. Here we're trying to say, oh. We have these rods and the end pieces are at a very well-defined distance. 
therefore we're already exactly parallel in the middle the rods can flex a little bit so you actually have have tolerance in the middle it's much it's very easy to move in the middle area the only possible binding is towards the ends where if if your distances are not the same you're going to start binding up but how, yeah how, uh, how much uh, <coughs> like tolerance is there in like a, a two inch square tubing on your standard tubing how much differential does it tend to to fatten or thicken or no. Yeah, um, no, it's you have to look at the the cold rolled steel specifications, but that's where you have to go. Um, don't know. It would be something around that. When you talk about that, it's not, it's not called precision machine steel. Like precision machine steel, yeah, absolutely, you get that. But short of that, you're gonna have to have adjustments and stuff like that. So, what to do here? Um, so say we solve the 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 y-axis. Say you build the two independent carriages with two bushings <laughs> each. So already there we're we're halving the number of bushings. That's a good start. Now what about on the the x-axis? Um, the way we have because the torch head is so heavy, you really do need unless we strip everything out of it and maybe just do the very simple prototype about the gas solenoids and igniter that thing is going to be pretty heavy so you do need like both sided support otherwise I mean it's really hard to but why it'll is be heavy? Uh, I mean you did a nice calculate for the other stuff but I mean the torch well, I mean, what is, is not super heavy <coughs> I'd say there's more the than a pound solenoids are not so heavy um, you don't see where the weights when, and the torch is right is there's no contact with there's the ten 10 pounds of Z shaft and there's 10 pounds of balance, about balance of system there's like a 3 pound motor it's like 20 pounds I mean 10 kilos I mean significant there's metal plates and everything else there so I mean it's, it is pretty heavy I mean when you lift it um, it may not feel so with the springs because it's easy to move it up and down, but the, the actual weight of it. I mean. Did you left the point of the rods at 80%? I mean, yeah, I was ball, just saying that ball, if you designed ball. it with different rod system, it seems like it, it's a real shame that those hollow rods mm. are not the same diameter. But yeah, that I mean, would, that would pretty are much. Are you those? Are you those hollow rods? Um, I don't know. We could still use them for like the big printers. Yeah, you don't. For the big printer, it would be just like the Z bed support, for example, which makes it a lighter weight bed support. That is used for. Print but yeah, maybe. You could print custom bearings, is true. If you print your own uh, Dalrin, that's a printable material. Um, so I would keep keep it at. I would still keep the two axes on the on the X. Unless we're we're just gonna strip that completely, remove all the parts, um, yeah. and we could go at that point. You can literally go to like the eight millimeter rods. Just even with a just put the torch head. Just you've got basically the nozzle thing and hoses. You can do that, but yeah. we shouldn't strip down but everything yet. The they could kind of float if you know what I mean. We don't have to attach them to the axis. I mean, we just have the hose and then the solenoids kind of suspended. <laughs> So there's no need to really attach them to anything. It's just just the hoses and the same. Yeah. Um, one thing that would definitely work is, like, say the smaller rods, but the big motor. Like with a small motor, that gets questionable unless you have well balanced out springs and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> yeah. But probably in order it would be. Um, I don't know, like if we do the simple holder with two two bushings, just use metal plate in between them, but whenever we do that, make it such that like you can take that assembly and make sure that it's absolutely easy to slide, like pound or less, it's just really smooth. If the plates are stiff and solidly attached, 
That means you can attach more things to it and still make it uh, keep it loose. The thing about the auto um, the, the X parallel thing where the rods can go in and out, I think that is still important because if the it is quite important because there is no guarantee of parallel on the on the y axis. But those aren't tight anyway. We loosened them before they were super tight and that was what was loosening things that that was a stiff point before. But now, um, now it's No, you just add the piece, the bushing piece, even like the one we have on a Z bed holder for the large printer where the rod can just slide in and out. The, the ends, the two ends, they can slide in and out, in and out on one side. Now one side you want to attach firmly because you want uh, regular motion. Well, I mean you don't want this to slide back and forth and get that inaccuracy. As long as one side is attached, you account for the non-parallel on the on the Y. You should add that. Add that. Uh, get rid of the bearings. If um, I mean, do we want to just try to keep use the, use the same parts and then um, just keep removing bearings? Now the bearing is going to just free float inside exactly. it too. Uh, yeah, it's another great thing. Yeah, I have about that. You either create thin air round shapes, 3D printed and stuff in them on both sides and then use the nuts that are already there or use measuring tape to stick it in place and then <laughs> we <laughs> might get <laughs> the measuring tape fits very well yeah it has a nice uh, diameter okay, one, of the, one of those on each side is enough to make it sit there without uh, jamming it yeah, so as long as no it. pictures get out to the world about this contraption <laughs> that's fine yeah, okay. or, or taking it apart, I don't know. Oh, they could super glue it, I mean, but super measure tape, super glue it in. Yeah, super glue is even better, actually. If it's if it's moving fairly well, and it's in the middle, yeah, my super, super glue, leave it for 30 minutes. Couldn't you just even, like you did, no, just some little nubs. Um, Plastic? Uh, yeah, yeah. with the like soldering iron so that the bearing doesn't yeah. can't actually come out. You might have, have to take it off shovel hole. Yeah. Yeah. You can of course first try it, they actually come out. I mean yeah. they never come out of the picture. Like well the, yeah, it's just a loose you don't want to rely on that. It'll uh, come out sometime. Um so how do we do this then? So I what I would call for is definitely like a nice stiff double double carriage system made of like four bearings, four bushings total mm -hmm. on each That's side on the, the on the eyes. Mm -hmm. I mean taking the wire. I would I would do that. I would start those. Now the other side is seems to be moving really nicely. Maybe just keep that, but I mean it's like we can con try to continue to make this one work. I think we need like a little upgrade there. Um that would be useful, but but definitely uh, the Y parallel, the Y paralleling mechanism, we should definitely put it in. Um, What's that? Where the the, the x-axis rods can slide in and out on the one of the Y sides. Yeah. Yeah, I never understood that. How hard is that to put it in? You just basically well, it's should we take a look at this printer again? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's the thing. So how are you going to do it? Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, that's look yeah, what's happening here. You can move this back and forth. These rods are sliding in and out. So if the axes, the Ys are not parallel, this can move back and forth. It's, it's fixed on one side. Fixed yeah. on one side. You can move on this side. That makes a difference. I can tell you that. Yeah, totally. Um, makes a lot of sense. We should definitely include that. How easy is it to do that? It's not bad. It's, it's, you can do, uh, we need to attach basically a piece that holds the bushings on one of the Y, y sides. So that means you move in the idler piece on one of the, in both of the X axes. So basically this piece you move in so you, loosen, you open up space to work with the rods. The rods are exposed. You can do one of this. So this is some 
kind of a piece which is like the conditions are attached to the you can do it. Yeah, no. well, well, first of all, no, it's, it's like this way. We would have to just well, drill it out to, to be able to fit. Oh, okay. you want to do okay. the bushing in there, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure we have any. It's not drill bits, you've got to print it out. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have drill bits that are 1.25. Brown shit with a drill bit. I don't know. Just print it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's an interface piece that connects to the y-axis. Right. Uh, we'll see how then those holes line up with where it's yeah. basically that then adjusts the the, the parallel of those rods and then yeah. But the question is have the locking, the lock up of the two carriages. I mean right now I think one major issue is that the two carriages that we have the Yeah. Yeah, they lock up. Yeah. Well, for that, so you have the two two half pieces, the, the holder pieces, and then they have to be connected with a stiff thing, like a like quarter-inch steel. It's kind of like what we did before. That worked. I mean, we, we had our big 5 by 10 table moving before. It wasn't super stable because the axis started wobbling, just sagging, but that all moved, and that was on NEMA 17 motors. Yeah. So we know this thing can work. Uh, so stiff connection between two pieces that you still have some play like you will tighten down hard but when you tighten it down hard at that point you make sure that you haven't locked anything that's the key there so it's a very stiff structure you can con now connect things to it without the worry of this part now binding up when you connect other things to it that's the thing so two half pieces with metal in between would, would be a good solution. That's a quick print because it's only half half bearing holders. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of everything we've been dealing with is just simply that we've been trying to fix the fact that nothing was going to square. And we've just been compounding, compounding, compounding. Yeah, let's uh, so, refresh yeah, on that. Yeah. Well, we got to solve this so that, you know, we're finding out this is a huge issue. Like I didn't really expect that 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 kind of tightness would arise here, but it's it is quite sensitive to that. I mean, and we looked at the number there. It's like one thousandth play in that bearing. I mean, yeah, if anything is off, it's going to start binding. And those those are so out of square. The plastic. Yeah. They're like three plus degrees. Some of them. Yeah. yeah, and I mean that would be okay if they were oversized and you then fix them together in a stiff way. Right now our connections are not particularly stiff. Like we have those thin little bars so things can still move around. So I think if we do a fixed connection, so that would mean two plates, one, one on each side. So do a sandwich with the, so effectively do like an elongated carriage piece, metal plastic composite. Yeah, that would be, that would do it. Yeah. So let's design that thing. Oh, um, yeah, Matt, we've got steel. I mean, we've got quarter-inch steel that we can use for that. So, and we can still print it on the universals. I mean, the pieces we can, as long as we oversize them, they're going to work. But, like, you can think of it that however you print it, it's all wonky and stuff like that. But when you hold it, it just, like, holds it with just the right amount of play. That's what we're looking for. So when you're now screwing them down tight, we fix them in a position that still allows full motion. We gotta test that. Like, um, so obviously the two individual carriages are gonna slide easily. Once you fix them, it's gonna be time for trouble. But at that point, that's when we have to do all the work before we go any further. It's like either heat gun or shift it around a little bit, ream it out, whatever. But that has to move perfectly still. And even, like you can think about the two top bearings, since the gravity pulls on them first, you can think about the two top bearings being like the ones that provide all that precision, because you can't do this, you release all degrees of freedom outside of like uh, t twisting like that. Um, so the bottom ones, you, we can think about the bottom bearings being looser, the top ones like super nice and tight, the bottom ones they're just like helping us 
move along. But even those two at the top, once we have the, the X in between them, it would in principle be sufficient to have like two and, and the bottom rod just like free floating, free floating yeah. even. Um, right? Because the point is you've got one, two, and then three, four on the other side. Four is all you need yeah, for... Yeah, so maybe even just... Maybe even just make the bottoms free floating and get rid of the, those two points of lockup. Could do that, and then we just print. Yeah, I mean we could do that. These two just like just free float on the bottom. So totally free floating, right? Yeah. So so you got the two bushings on top. The piece could still be the same, but you just remove the bushing altogether. The bottoms could still be the same thing. And the top could have two. bushings, or or I was thinking removing the bolts that hold it to the 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 other axis. Can see about that. Mm -hmm. And the top, if they're fixed, you want to have one or two? I mean, go back to two, two each, or just one? Each. One, still okay. one. Okay. I mean, you saw the numbers on that. They, they, they hold like three thousand pounds <laughs> for rotation. It's not the bushings; they're the limit. It's how they're aligned. So a small number of them could do the job. There, they just need to be aligned. So the minimum number gets us maximum possibility of alignment. Maybe we just, yeah, I mean, so I guess the good point would be, let's just do the, the bushings on the top actually being used. The two ones on the bottom, we can still ha leave that space there and see how it moves. Um, when we put the, mm, yeah, I think, it, I think it would work. Um, the only issue is there, like if you look at the auto paralleling mechanism, that has to be connected, like the two rods, like on one side, they're connecting to your long carriage. Do we need that then still? Or we try to well, yeah, I mean, you still haven't, we still haven't addressed the parallel issue. Like, yeah, you can have the two, two right. on each side, but if they're like going out, I uh, can't have that. That's total binding. We're talking about, okay, look at this. If we have one thousandth accuracy on a frame, then we don't have to worry about it. But we don't, right? That's as tight as as uh, the bearings are. Yeah. So I think we should design them with the option of using four, but we'll try even like three or two. You know, we'll start with. Now the thing is, how do you test it? Because you can't test the full motion until you have two sides attached. So you can test four bushings. You can test that. But if you have two bushings, you can't really test it. Um, somewhat. I mean, you it'll move slow, move uh, smooth. But the bottom could uh, wobble back and forth a little bit. But maybe the interim there is just using the three bushings instead of four. <clears throat> But all that, like the plastic that's holding them and the metal, they have, it has to be firmly attached. Plastic to the metal has to be firmly attached. Can we use the, you know, we have the brass bushings, but also the these plastic bushings. They have higher tolerances, I assume. Oh yeah, they, they actually do. The bottom and oh yeah, we could try that. Um, brass at top. Because we do have nylon bushings as well. They are higher tolerance. Um, we have nylon bushings that size. Yeah, one inch. So maybe just use them on the bottom. Oh. <laughs> that would have been nice. Oh, okay. But they're a little higher friction because nylon is not as good as brass. The brass, yeah. Not high friction, but less less accurate. Too far, more slop. More slop. Oh. Um, but the slop we were looking for is one sixteenth inch accuracy on the torch table is more than what we need. That's that's what we're shooting for. So. We can be, we can have like one sixteenth slot somewhere. <laughs> oh, <fire it> up. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's do it.